Good day, everyone. This is Jerry Udelson talking to you from beautiful, sunny Southern California. It's our summer here, and I'd like to give a few remarks tonight. Gunter's invited me very kindly on the occasion of Water Group's 10th anniversary party. And so congratulations to Water Group, to Gunter for pulling off a minor miracle in the business world, which is to make a business last and to do well with it and to do good work. I want to talk to you tonight about sustainable buildings and sustainable cities because urban development is going to define our ability to respond sustainably in the 21st century. Already more than 50% of the world's people live in cities and by 2050 experts project that to be closer to 75%. So what we do in cities has everything to do with how we handle global climate change and so forth. You know, there's what I call action steps, things we can do now, we can do in the next half decade and the next decade that will really make a difference later in the century. It's always much easier to do things when problems are smaller than when they're larger. So I've crafted what I call five action steps for sustainable buildings and sustainable cities going forward. The first one is smart buildings, green buildings, bright green buildings, intelligent buildings, buildings that work much better for people and the environment. This is an area that I've been working in for the past almost 20 years now. And it seems clear that the next big leap in the building environment is going to be zero net energy buildings, as low water use as possible, but definitely buildings that have a solar component to them, and that use far less energy than today. The good news is, through our work in green buildings over the last 15 or 20 years, we've been able to figure out how to do this. Now it's just a question of practical economics and good design and, and getting, getting the work done. What goes with green buildings, though, is green infrastructure. And I call this biomimicry at scale, trying to do what nature does but in our urban environment. For example, opening up old water courses that have been channelized, made into concrete ditches, back into vibrant rivers. This is in fact happening all over the world, including in my hometown, surprisingly Los Angeles, where the Los Angeles River is actually being returned to nature. Because in the desert environment of a place like Los Angeles, Floods are supposed to happen. Extreme events happen. So you have to make your water courses available to soak up the water. We need integrated water management so that water, sewerage, flood control, and maintaining a good environment for plants and animals is all thought of together. Smart cities also require water infrastructure. So I always look to Singapore as a city of 5 million people, which has no assured water supply after mid-century when its current agreement with Malaysia dries up, literally. We also need to keep score in a much better way. And so I've been actually pleased to work with a Sydney-based company, Switch Automation, to introduce some of their cloud-based platforms into the U.S. buildings market. Because we know now that cloud-based information, uh, real-time sensing, visual displays of information. All of these things are gonna make us much better managers in the future. The fourth thing I think is critical and something that's actually quite hard to do, even though simple to talk about, is to abandon the 20th century rule book. For example, in cities, the 20th century rule book for traffic engineers was make cars go faster, make more cars go more faster, so to speak. And in the 21st century, we're realizing that we need to have cities in which cars go slower, in which fewer cars go less fast, and engineering and planning infrastructure need to accommodate that. If you go to a lot of the older cities of Europe, you find dedicated streets for bicycles and pedestrians, for example. But the 20th century rule book tells us that we have to separate things like water, sewer, flood control, to talk about water-based things, when in fact they all need to be thought of in an integrated way. So we need to write the 21st century rule book, and I hope that people like Gunter and 
water group are actually doing that in your area. The fifth thing we need to do is communicate best practices. You know, it's, it's ironic that even in today's age with everything involved with social media, microblogging, everything that's going on, it's still hard to find out what has worked in other parts of the world. So communicating success, communicating best practices is certainly a critical part going forward. So I want to congratulate Water Group on its 10th anniversary. Hopefully there'll be a 20th and more. And I understand that some of you have my most recent book, Reinventing Green Building, uh, as a door prize tonight. So if you do get that book, I would like to suggest that you read it and that you provide me with feedback on it. I think there's a lot of great ideas about how to make the 21st century work better for all of us. So good night. Enjoy your pints of Foster's or whatever else is being provided. And again, congratulations to Gunter and his whole team.